I, you know, when you, when you work with an organization, sometimes you get a chance to, you know, you know somebody, but unless you work with them off and on, at least, you know, here and there, you really don't get to know them. But, you know, on our Heritage Foundation, uh, this guy is, he's the epitome of our passion for, for preservation uh, of heritage and history. I mean, he's got his... You know, he, he does a million projects. He's the guy that we go to. Betty Anheuser has stepped in. He's also a board member. Betty, if you would please stand up. I, you didn't think I was going to catch you coming in. But Betty, thank you. <laughs> Betty's our other go-to person when it comes to the heritage and history of Sugar Land. But this next guy, he's an author. He's a historian. Uh, he's the guy, like I say, that just, just really has got a passion for this. Uh, he's the guy that helped bring this or reinvent this series, and he's going to tell you a little bit about it. He's a true pleasure to work with. If you would, please help me bring up Bruce Kelly. Thank you, Dennis, for your kind words. It's uh, a little exaggerated, but I appreciate it. Uh, I know you're really anxious to get to our speaker, and I am too, but I just want to tell you a little bit about what in the heck is Ch Chautauqua, and how do you say it? It's Chautauqua. And the Chautauqua movement started in the late 1800s, early 19, uh, 20th century. And it was a movement, an adult education movement, that started in western New York on Chautauqua Lake. And it expanded throughout rural America. And it gave rural America a chance to hear speakers, to, get, uh, to hear cultural activities. Uh, there were things like uh, Gilbert and Sullivan plays that would come through. And I just want to read you, this is how it worked. I think the Sugarland Auditorium was probably on one of the Chautauqua circuits. And in a Chautauqua circuit, each performer or group appeared on a particular day of the program. Thus, the first day talent would move on to other Chautauquas, followed by the second day performers, and so on throughout the touring season. So this was probably in uh, the summertime. Some little communities only were able to handle it in a tent. And it's possible that Sugarland before 1918 had Chautauquas in a tent here. And when they designed this uh, auditorium, they designed it as a social center of the town. And one of the things it would do would host these traveling shows. There's a lot more that this auditorium did, but I don't have time to go into it. Uh, by the mid-1920s, when the circuit Chautauquas were at their peak, and that's when this auditorium was built, they appeared in over 10,000 communities to audience of more than 45 million and by about 1940, they had run out their course because what happened was the radio and talkies replaced it. People didn't have to come to see live performances or hear speakers. They could hear it on the radio or get their entertainment in the, in the talkies. So that's why we chose the name Chautauqua. We're reviving this series here in Sugarland that they used to do almost 100 years ago.